Pralia Productions, in association with Soul Drifter Studios and their affiliates, presents The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama based on the true story of the infamous 1938 radio broadcast that shook the nation with fear. Previously on The Martian Broadcast. My show is falling apart, my team is overworked and sleep deprived. I think you may want to just go back to what was given to us. We have spent the week working. We don't have time to create another show. What about Around the World in 80 Days? We'll do a rerun. Orson burned the recording of Around the World. Why did you destroy the recording of our show? Aura, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Your future with CBS hangs by a thread. This is episode five, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I'm sorry, sir. There still doesn't seem to be anyone there. Are you sure you're trying the right person? It's John Hausman. Do you need me to spell it out for you? No, sir. That's the right name. Well, then try again. Of course, sir. Again, damn you, again till he answers. This is your twelfth attempt, sir. Perhaps you'd have better luck trying at another time. Well, why would I do that when I'm so lucky to have a harpy like yourself chattering nonsense in my ear? Try again. Hello? Hello? Damn you. (sighs) Operator John Hausman, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carl Phillips, speaking to you from the Observatory at Princeton. I'm standing in a large, semicircular room, pitch black except for an oblong split in the ceiling. Paul, who wrote this junk? Knock it off or we'll dock you. I don't need this gig. I know for a fact you do. What's the issue? I'm describing everything, but people don't care about a newscaster at Princeton. They care about aliens. The only reason they'll care about aliens is if they care about you. Anyone seen Orson yet? Not yet. Damn the man. Do you think he ever gets tired of being carried around? About as tired as I am of actors thinking they know how to pen a script. I don't need this, Paul. No one's locked the door. You're free to leave. Where the hell is Hausman? Lover's quarrel, I bet. Who with? His child bride or his child husband? Oh, (laughs) hey, Annie. Hey, Howard. Uh, Anyone seen John? We were just talking about him. He and Orson aren't anywhere. Maybe they went on a vacation together. I hear California's nice. No, you don't really think they would. I'm just saying that rumors have been flying around that kid for years. And if Hausman or any of us were smart, we'd place money on that horse winning some serious races. Hello, everyone. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mr. Hausman. Now, would you look at that? Right again. Howard, get up here. If you're going to be precious with your pros, perform it. I want a break. Give my part to Annie. Annie? No, thanks. I like to keep my boundaries. I know I'm meant to be, and it's not behind the mic. Christ! Fine. Everyone seems a bit more tense than usual. Did I sleep until Sunday? I stopped by Orson's house last night. We had a... discussion. A discussion? I told him how we, as in everyone here, were feeling as of late. And how did he take that? About as well as you'd think. That might explain why he's not here. (laughs) You don't think he'd tuck his tail between his legs? Unfortunately not. When he wants to bite, he'll sink his teeth in. Well, okay, Howard. Just this bit on nine. Can you handle that? Keep back there! Keep back there, I tell you! Maybe there's men in there trying to escape. It's red hot. They'll burn you to a cinder. Keep back there! Keep those idiots back! Now this time without the attitude, all right? Just busting your chops. Bust some of yours. Okay, everyone, quiet. We're gonna start from nine and try and take us through. Aura, can we get some sound on this one? You got it. And action! Keep back there. Keep back, I tell you. Maybe there's men in it trying to escape. They'll burn to a cinder. Keep 
back there! Keep those idiots back! Who gave you any right to think you knew better than me? Get off me! Get off my coattails! What has gotten into you, you sniveling brat? You told Davidson Taylor I destroyed around the world. Well, you may as well have. You continually sabotage. You have no regard. You... You... You what? What possible insult could you throw my way to injure me more than you already have? Playing the genius victim as per usual. It won't work for those that know you, Orson. No need to play the victim when you've made one of all of us. Your lie may have cost us the entire show. And how far do you think you'd have gotten if I didn't do everything in my power to make sure you got your way? If it weren't for me, none of these people would even begin to tolerate your asinine behavior. And if it weren't for me, they wouldn't have a job in the first place. Is that what this is now? A job? A chore? I bet you're thrilled that Campbell's is about to shower you with spaghetti and stock options. Only so that I may drown you in it, princess. So you admit it then, you lust for money. The money is what keeps a roof over our collective heads. It's what allows me to create in the first place. You're the one who pre-sold Danton before it was ready. Who's the true slave to the dollar, Houseman? Or perhaps you're just a slave for power, running after it like you chase after young, impressionable girls. Just wanted to see if the sound was all right for you, Orson. Since we need to ask your permission for everything, apparently. That is not what... Or a... Just try me. It's mutiny, then? Mutiny? Where do you think you are? You come busting in here and expect us to what? Cheer you on? I'm assuming Davidson Taylor called you. Last night. How did he sound? Furious. I don't blame him. Where were you yesterday? We needed you. I slept through it. All right? You slept through it? Orson, we were chewed up and spat out by him. It would have been nice to have a little backup. Yes, well, I've been very busy. Yeah, and so have we, Orson. You're not alone when it comes to being busy. We're losing sleep here. I'm going crazy every day thinking that you're going to toss out page after page and tell me to figure it out. I'm exhausted, Orson. We all are. And I know personally that your life outside of here, Orson, it has been hectic as of late. If you don't slow down, you'll burn yourself out. And then what good are you? Speaking of burning out, Art was up with me late last night finalizing some sounds. Ran a fever of over a hundred this morning because of it. And do you see where I am? Art sick? I wish him a speedy recovery. I think Orson often forgets that we aren't invincible. And it only comes when the room goes quiet. And we realize what's at stake here. If we keep going like this, maybe it won't be Art who's sick. It'll be Orson. And if he's this dramatic when he's well, well, I can only imagine when he's ill. You know, I would have given my left toe to see Taylor's face when you told him I'd burned the tape. Tragedy and comedy. Sometimes you're not sure which mask he's wearing. It, it looked like he was walking down a flight of stairs and he missed the last step. <laughs> if only every day of the week felt as good as these little tense breaks that we have. Maybe we'd make it just yet. Maybe. Anyone care to explain what in the hell is happening up here? Ah, Taylor, we were just discussing you. Your ears burning. I got word of a brawl taking place in the studio of one of my shows. Care to explain? Brawl? I don't recall a brawl happening. Wells, did you see someone brawling? No, John, I must have just missed it. You think this is funny? What is wrong with you people? Fighting in a dress rehearsal? Destroying company property? Running around the building like headless chickens every week? Where were you all raised? The theater, mostly. <laughs> More jokes. You're lucky I don't call security to have the pack of you thrown out. If you do that, you'll have nothing but dead air tomorrow at eight. Oh, you think? Well, I happen to know exactly what will be going on tomorrow night. This 
It took me all day yesterday to do it. But I got into the archives and found a pressed copy of Around the World in 80 Days. Don't be absurd. Think of it as an encore performance. I know how you run your little operation here. And I've played ball because up till now, you've delivered. But no longer. I'm tightening the leash. Davidson, War of the Worlds is ready. We just finished ironing out some kinks. We're past that now, John. Well, what will the soup company say about that? Please. You act like I've never had to play ball with investment companies. Don't forget that sometimes age outranks talent, Mr. Wells. You will be playing around the world. I don't think we will. Excuse me? You heard me. My contract states that I have ultimate say over what the Mercury puts out, and I say we're going ahead with the Mars broadcast. You're right. You will be protected if you do. But only you. Fire everyone else. You're not serious. Not only that, but should you decide to put on this farce of a show, I'll ensure that any script you turn into me will not only be rejected, but instead replaced by the melodramatic ramblings of a buffoon that will only serve to make the Mercury Theater and by proxy you, Mr. Wells, look like nothing but sidewalk performers barely able to afford a cold shower, let alone a hot meal. Do I make myself crystal clear? Yes, Mr. Taylor. Oh no, I know I've made myself clear to you. How about to everyone else? Have I made myself clear? Yes, 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 yes Mr. Taylor. Taylor. Excellent. Mrs. Nichols, I'll leave you in charge of the company property. Do make sure it ends up here tomorrow on time and without tampering. Understood? Understood. I look forward to your show tomorrow, but I'm certain it will be fantastic. Well, I suppose that's that then. I will be here tomorrow to make sure that the recording goes smoothly, and perhaps I will discuss with Mr. Taylor a new arrangement. One that protects you all, instead of just me. Aura, will you bring it by in the morning? I don't trust myself with it. <laughs> After all, the last one had caught fire. No need to keep it up. They all know I was bluffing. Huh. I'm off to a bar. I'll take any company that wishes to join me, although I don't blame you if you don't. Take care, everyone. I... I am sorry. Even his exits are dramatic. Anyone feel like grabbing a drink? With present company excluded, yes. Safe to say rehearsal's done for the day, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Unless you want to run around the world for fun. No. Repeats aren't fun. Shame. This one could have been something. Aura, before you go, uh, can I get a ride? Sure, kiddo. I'll be outside. Sorry, everyone, but that's it for the day. Want to head down to the track, Paul? Sure. What else do I have to gamble on? Annie, I could give you a ride if you like. I'm all right, Mr. Houseman. You said it yourself. Perhaps things are better prioritized. May I call you later? Sure. There's just no guarantee I'll answer. Damn it all. I thought for sure he was going to bust his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Even Houseman knows that Orson has a sellable face. He wouldn't risk that. I suppose. Cat's out of the bag now, too, right? Aw, oh, hon. We've known. I just didn't want it known, you know? I know. Uh, well, maybe it's for the better. That right? He's far too old, and he never did like my writing. Neither does Koch. So what do they know? Yeah, what do they know? <laughs> well, I'd like to read it sometime. What? Whatever you've got cooking up. Oh, no, I, 
I couldn't ask you. You're not asking. I am. Well, all right then. I'll have you know, I used to be a performer. Really? Well, why aren't you uh, acting up there with the rest of them then? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sharing the spotlight with Orson Welles? Oh, I wouldn't wish that on the worst of them. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? You are where you say you're going to be. For once, I don't want to disappoint. You go by the theater? No, I didn't want to deal with Zorn. I swung by. Everything seems to be going all right. Good. That's good. And how are you? I'm fine. Yes. And I'm the great Orson Welles. You're much better looking than him. Buy you a drink? <laughs> That'll be my fifth. Fifth one's the charm, I'm told. Come on. Funny. I don't think I've ever come this close to being fired before. Liberating, isn't it? Constricting. Without that money, we won't be able to put on anything near the level of Danton in some time. Who cares? I care. You care so much, you've made yourself miserable. I'm not even 25 and I'm this miserable. I am drunk. But you are drunk. As far as your age, consider yourself blessed. You have a lifetime in front of you. What if that life is nothing but disappointment and failure? All I seem to have accomplished has been for nothing if my own players turn against me. All? Oh. Orson, you've done wonderful things. And it isn't enough. Who says so? I say so. And who are you to say so? The great Orson Welles. You're damn right. But you're also the man who turned your team against him. Cheers to that. I do sincerely apologize for accosting you. Please, I think we've both dreamt of the day. I just never imagined it surrounded by peers. Would you rather it be surrounded by critics? <laughs> I think they're the same in this situation. I don't think I can face them again. Not after what I've done. You invited them out for a drink. I knew they wouldn't come. I'm shocked you did. Well, a friend brought me here once, a while ago. And it's a good bar. Good people. Good art. Do you mean that? Hmm. Perhaps I am being generous. The bar is just okay. I mean, we are still friends, yes? Yes. Of course. You are just going to have to start paying my medical insurance, is all. If it's the price of a drink or two, I think I can manage. Speaking of, care for another? It's on you. No, I shouldn't. I'll sleep all day again, and we know how Taylor has a pension against those who hibernate. Gin and tonic. And now, coming to the stage, some new blood, Mr. John Hausman. What? Good evening, everyone. My name is John. Hello, John. As you may have guessed, I have had a few drinks. <laughs> but fret not, for that is just the spirit of the bard working through me to bring you this piece of literature, if I may. Uh, may I? Yes! Of Go for it! Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> I will require some assistance. My cue is, the queen, my lord, is dead, if you would. The queen, my lord, is dead. <laughs> she should have died hereafter. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hours upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Yeah! 
Thank you, thank you. Tomorrow is another day, is it not, Orson? That's right, John, my boy. Now the great John Houseman do another. Thank you for listening to The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama production brought to you by Pralia Productions, Soul Drifter Studios, and their affiliates. Directed by S. Christian Rowe. Written by S. Christian Rowe and Jordan Stidham. Starring Ari Stidham as Orson Welles. Keaton Talmadge as Ora Nichols. Jim Brannigan as John Houseman. Oscar Jordan as Davidson Taylor. Courtney Reese as Ann Froelich. Christopher Hodge as Howard Koch. And Rama Valori as Paul Stewart. Produced by Casey Hammonds, Daniel Patton, Jordan Stidham, and S. Christian Rowe. Music composition by J.D. O'Day. Sound editing by Jason Crow. Hi, everybody. This is Jordan Stidham. And this is Christian Rowe, creators of The Martian Broadcast. Thank you so much for listening to the latest episode. That was episode five, and we were real jazzed to bring that one to you. That's right, Christian. We were so jazzed. But we're even more jazzed about the people that made that possible. You don't have to keep making fun of me for saying jazz, you know, Jordan. Well, would I be me if I didn't? That's very true. Uh, people like Tasha Carter. Alyssa Vaught. Tanner. You know, just Tanner. Tanner, no last name, cool move. Matina Newsom, Samantha Maddock. And Marion Aruvigno. We really want to just thank you again for listening. If you liked this podcast, please subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts so you can stay up to date on when we drop new episodes or content. You can also find us on our Instagram or Twitter pages at Martian Broadcast. That is the at symbol Martian as in Martian and broadcast spelled B-R-D-C-S-T. Please make sure to rate, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for listening.